One thing that you'll want to make sure is that your air conditioner outside your house um, has good drainage around it and um, a lot of times putting rocks around your air conditioner can be helpful so that when it rains all of this dirt and stuff doesn't turn into mud and splash up onto your air conditioner. So having rocks around it will keep all of the mud and everything away from it and keep your air conditioner nice and clean um, because having a clean air conditioner is going to save you money on your power bill but also help it work more efficiently and air conditioners are very expensive so you don't have to want to um, or you don't want to have to replace these too often. So now we're going to talk about how to change the air filter in your house. So a lot of times you'll see one of these things either in a utility room or on a ceiling somewhere, um, maybe in a hallway or something. And this is your air return. So the air in your house, it comes out of your air vents and then it flows back into this through a filter and into your air conditioner so that it can kind of cycle through. So this collects all of the kind of dirt, dust, pet hair, stuff like that that's in your house. So as you can see, um, mine is pretty dirty right now. And that's because I've got two dogs and two cats. So we have lots of pet hair and lots of dust um, and dirt coming in from outside. So this collects all of that and keeps it from coming out of the air vents in the ceiling where my air conditioner comes from um, or air conditioning comes from. So you wanna change this every one to three months. Um, ours is usually about once a month because like I said, we've got animals, so it gets pretty dirty. So up here, you've got these clips at the top. So you just pull those to the side and then this comes down. So now you've got your air filter in here. Um, this one was changed not too recently. So I'm gonna um, not actually switch it out, but basically, you have this side that has all of this um, metal, which is just to kind of keep it um, in shape, like the staying in the same shape. And then one side is plain, and this is the side that collects all the dust. So normally, um, this would be kind of black and everything when I change it because of all the dust. You can see on one of the sides, there will be a little arrow that says airflow. So that's right there and that's telling you which way your air filter goes in. So when you're putting it in, your air flows into this. Now you can see down here, um, when I take this filter out, there's a big giant hole in the floor. Um, that leads to my air conditioner. So the air is flowing in through here and down into that hole into the air conditioner outside. So I take this and I've got my arrow right here that says airflow. And then I am just going to place that into the frame and pop it right into place. And that's easy as that. So like I said, this will get black with all of the dust and dirt and nastiness. So you wanna change this out for a new one. And then when you close this up, you also want to clean this off because all of this dust and everything, um, this will get just as dirty as your air filter every month as well. And that's that. Taking care of your ceiling fans is something that you might not really think about, but it can be really helpful and save you money on your electric bill. So I'm going to show you on mine. First of all, you want to make sure that you clean them. So there is a nice little layer of dust up here that collects pretty easily. So you want to make sure you do that on a regular basis. You can also look up here and see there's this little notch. So this changes the direction of which way your fan blades go. So you can see that the fan blades are a little bit angled. So this side is higher than this side. So one way is going to push the air up and the other way is going to push the air down. Now, I don't know if you've learned this in school or not, but hot air rises and cold air sinks. So that's one reason why if there's a fire in your house, you should crawl on the ground because the air lower is going to be cooler and the air is gonna be hotter higher up. If you live in a two-story house, you might notice that your downstairs is usually cooler than your upstairs. So with your ceiling fan, you wanna push warm air down in the winter and you wanna pull the cool air up in the summer. So that's gonna help save money on both your heating and your cooling bill if you switch the direction of your fan blades um, between the seasons.
I want to talk a little bit more about kitchen safety and things that you should and shouldn't do in your kitchen. So I'm going to kind of show you around mine a little bit and reasons why I have certain things in certain places and show you a couple different safety features. So this is my stove area and you'll see that I've got something plastic over here and something metal on my stove. So there's a very particular reason for that. A lot of people think that, you know, if a stove is off, it can just be extra counter space, but that is not the case because it's very easy to accidentally turn these on and then um, start a house fire. My kettle is okay here because it is metal and it's meant to be on a stove, but I wouldn't want to have my plastic um, cookie tray here. Um, I wouldn't want to have that on the stove because if we accidentally turned it on, this is definitely something that could start a fire and we don't want that. Um, I also have this picture frame over here and again, it's fine off of the stove, but I wouldn't want to have it on top of the burner. Um, so that's something that is important to know. And over here, we've got the oven and you'll notice that I don't have a towel um, on the actual handle of the oven. And the reason for that is um, if you are walking by and let's say um, you have a small child in your house, they can tug on that towel and pull this open. And if it's hot, um, you know, if it's turned on, that can be a safety hazard for sure. So I wanna talk a little bit about outlets. So over here, we have an outfit that, or an outlet that is called a GFCI. So basically what that means is it has the test and reset buttons on the outlet. So you might see that these types of outlets are in your house, um, in your kitchens and bathrooms. And that's because they have to be there um, because they are a safety feature. So if something is plugged into this outlet um, and then that item were to fall into the sink and get wet, um, this outlet would automatically uh, turn off. This one is also connected to the outlet that is over here. So even though this one doesn't have the buttons, it is within six feet of a sink, so it is required to be connected to one. So the outlet that is over there is also connected to the one over here so that if either one of these um, has an electrical surge or something like that, it will automatically shut off because it is near a sink. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize that they need to clean is the vent um, and the filter above their stove. So up um, under your um, vent that leads out of your house, there is a filter here. So it's pretty easy to take off. I just, for mine, I just push it one way and pull it out. And then you can see that it's pretty dirty. So it's got all of the oil and grease from stuff that you cook. So all I need to do is take this over to my sink and give it a good scrub down with some soap and water and then let it dry. So let's take a second to talk about the dryer in your house. So house fires are super common um, starting in dryers. So this is one of the areas in your home that can catch on fire most easily. Um, and it's really important to clean out your dryer vent. So all of the lint that comes off of your clothes um, is really great for a fire starter. And if you wanna collect it and use it to start a fire outside, that's awesome, but you don't want it to start a fire in your house. So when you open your dryer, um, somewhere on your dryer, there will be a vent that you need to clean out. Sometimes they're up here. Um, you'll see it'll have like a little handle that you can pull out. Mine happens to be on the inside. So right here, it says clean filter after each use. So all of this lint needs to come off of this filter and then I just pop it right back into place. So I want to make sure I get all of the little stuff off and then that's all you have to do. So that's one way to clean out your dryer lint, but there's one more place that you need to do and that's outside. So let's head out there and check that out too. So now let's talk about the other spot that you need to clean out your dryer lint. So outside of your house somewhere, you'll probably see one of these small vents. So this vent is where all of the heat from the dryer comes out. 
So my dryer is running inside, so you can see that these flaps are open. Typically, um, when the dryer's not on, they'll be shut, but since it is on, there's hot air coming out. So in addition to all of the heat coming from the dryer, there's also a lot of the lint that um, comes out and it gets past that filter inside. So this is another spot where it's important to clean it out because again, this stuff makes really good fire starter and you're pushing hot air through it, okay? So you just wanna come out here and pick off all of this lint and clean it off as good as you can. And then you can also see on the inside, um, in this pipe, there's a whole bunch of lint in there. So that's where you want to take something like a shop vac and get as much of that out as possible. You can also take off the metal pipe on the back of your dryer and clean that out as well, because that's just one more spot that all of this lint can collect. To take a walk around your house every so often and uh, take a look at kind of the foundation and the gutters. So if you've got gutters on your house, um, it's really good to check the bottom of your downspouts and make sure that the water is flowing out away from your house. So you don't want water to get up under your foundation or if you have a mobile home um, up underneath all of your skirting. You want this whole area to be dry. So these things, um, divert water away from your house. So a lot of times I'll come out here and I'll find that it's next to my gutter. And this isn't really doing me any good because now the, um, the water is just gonna come right here. So you can kind of see in this spot, water has been collecting in this area um, when it's rained. And so it's soaking into the ground right here and it's making everything soft. So it's always good to make sure you've got your diverter up and in the right spot. Um, if you've got animals like I do, they tend to move it out of the way. Um, so I always make sure to come out here and put these back into place and also make sure that your gutter is flowing. So up at the top, you can see that you've got the gutter and then it comes down here. So sometimes people will take um, an air blower, um, like a leaf blower and blow it up into the spout you only want to do that if it hasn't rained in a little bit because you don't want water to come down into your blower. Um, but you can also get on a ladder and go up there and check and make sure that your gutters are clean, especially if you have trees that are over your house because anything that falls onto your roof then goes into your gutters and these get clogged up. So it's really good to make sure that you clean them every so often. So let's talk about how to fix a clogged drain. So this drain in my bathroom happens to be clogged and um, a lot of times people will try to use Drano or something like that to clear it, which sometimes works if it's um, a pretty light clog, but this one has had Drano poured down it and it's still pretty clogged. So we're gonna take a look at the pipes underneath because it's a pretty simple fix to um, completely unclog it. So when we look at the pipes over here, you've got what's called, um, this is the trap. So this little curved part underneath, right there, it connects to the drain under the sink. So this is um, the drain spout and then comes down and then back up and out. So there's a couple different reasons why you have this trap. So if we just look at the actual um, build of it. Water comes down and then when the water level reaches this point it comes out over here because um, if you think about water it's always level. So this does a couple different things. One it can um, keep smells at bay so usually there's water sitting in this part of the pipe um, and it keeps any smells from out here, for, um, it keeps them from going back up into that drain. But it also can collect some solid material um, because you don't want those things going into your pipes. So we can take this part off and clear out whatever is in there because in addition to keeping those solid materials from getting into your pipes, um, a lot of times it can just collect right here and then that's where your clog comes in. So we're going to take this apart and 
see if we can figure it out. So you can see that there's this little, um, this ring right here, and there's one at the top on the other side as well. And that's what's holding this trap in. You'll notice that I've got a big bowl down here, and this is important because like I said, there's water that stays in this trap. So you actually um, might not need any tools to do this, which is nice, because these have these little wings that help you unscrew it. So you unscrew one side, kind of lift it up. You can see that water's already coming out. And you unscrew your other side and lift that up. And when you pull this down, like I said, you're gonna have some water. I can dump it out. And you can see that there's all kinds of nastiness in there. So right now, if I were to turn on my sink, which I will, water is going to come out from the hole underneath. So I can see water coming out there and I'm going to take this and clean it out. And I'm just going to rinse it because it's all going into my bowl right now. But I can kind of see that my sink is still not draining super well. So what that means is there's a clog that was before this part. So we're gonna turn that water off. Now, you can see that this gets pretty nasty um, because it's anything that you have washed off your hands, um, any hair or dirt, anything like that gets clogged up in your sink. So, as you guys know, this thing um, behind your sink um, puts your drain up and down. So a lot of times there can be stuff clogged into that. So now let's look at that underneath. So back here, we still got our water running out. Back here, you've got this little bar that goes into the drain, and then it connects back here to this little metal piece. This is what holds your um, actual drain stopper and pushes it up and down. So when it is down, down here, it's actually up in the sink. And when it's up down here, it's down in the sink. So basically it's connected here and it pulls it up and down. So you can actually take this apart and take it off. There's a little um, piece that you can twist off and you can pull your drain apart, the drain stopper out, and um, you can help all of the clog come out. All right, so now that you have unclogged your drain, it's time to put your trap back on and it's pretty easy. So you'll see that one spot or one side is a little taller and has this wider piece. That goes on the actual drain part and then you just line it up to your other pipe. And then these um, little rings just slide down and you just hand tighten them into place and do that on both sides and then you're good to go.